pitch bend, modulation, and much more. This type of data can be edited in the Graphic Controller Editor. This window is displayed by clicking on the Graphic Controller Editor button at the bottom left. Now let's take a look at how it's used. First, we need to select the type of event to edit. For starters, I'll choose Tempo. I'll select the Pencil tool and click on the screen where I would like to insert a Tempo event. Events can be inserted one at a time or drawn in like this. When drawn in, the events are inserted at the current fill rate as indicated here. After events have been inserted, they can be edited by choosing the arrow cursor mode, moving over the event to display the up-down arrows, and dragging the event to the desired value. There are two display modes for viewing events, line mode and block mode. Line mode displays the current event as a vertical line at the event's insert position, as shown here. Block mode displays a filled box from the insert point until the next event. This is especially helpful for viewing the status of a controller which was inserted earlier in the song, such as a tempo or volume event. In addition to the pencil tool, a group of events may be inserted or modified using the line and curve tools. The Line tool allows you to insert a number of events by drawing a line. This is especially helpful for creating smooth crescendos, decrescendos, accelerandos, or linear pan effects. The Curve tool is similar, only it allows you to create a nonlinear gradation of events. Like the Line tool, you simply draw a line, only when you let go, the events are not inserted right away. By moving the mouse around, you can bend the line to get the desired curve. Once you have the curve you like, click the mouse again and the events are inserted. A unique mode of the controller editor is Note Velocity. Unlike the other modes which let you insert events, the Velocity Editor lets you view velocities of existing notes for editing only. Note, however, that the pencil, line and curve tools allow you to adjust velocities of a range of notes just as you would enter events. This is especially useful for adding dynamics to a step entered piece of music. Occasionally it's easier to edit your MIDI data in a raw numeric form. This is done in the event list editor. MIDI events can be viewed, inserted and edited in this window. I'll begin by inserting a few events. One popular technique is to insert patch changes in the middle of a track. For example, if I wanted the bass part to play a different instrument sound at the chorus of the song, I could simply insert a patch change at the chorus section. To do this, I'll first click on the Insert button. Then I'll select Patch Change in the Type Display. I'll adjust the insert point, which should be just before the chorus starts, giving the synthesizer enough time to change sounds. Then choose the new sound. When I press OK, the event will be inserted into the track at the desired location. To modify this event, I simply select it and press the Change button. This will display the Event Edit dialog, allowing me to modify the event. Sometimes it is desirable to remove certain types of events. For example, if you would use the Pitch Bend wheel while recording a part and you wanted to remove the Pitch Bend, you could do so as follows. First, I'll select the Filter button to display the Filter dialog. Then, uncheck all event types except for Pitch Bend and press OK. 
Now only the pitch bend events will be displayed in the event list editor. The others are filtered out. To remove the pitch bend commands, highlight the events and press the delete button. In addition to regular track data, global tempo, key signature, and time signature data can be edited here as well. For example, to insert a tempo event, I'll choose the conductor track from the track selection and click on Insert. Notice that the event types are different this time in the Event Edit dialog. I'll select Tempo as the event type, set the tempo value, and set the time when I want the tempo event to take place. Press OK and the tempo change event is inserted. As you can see, there are often many ways to accomplish a composing task in Digital Orchestrator. I encourage you to experiment. Don't forget that there's a multi-level undo feature, so you can always go back if you make a mistake. This concludes the MIDI editing demonstration. To learn about the powerful set of MIDI transforms, please select the MIDI transforms item from the tutorial menu.